Dr. Carl Sagan, our science correspondent, who's going to take us on a fascinating trip through the universe, a perspective of the universe and man's place in it that is the most fascinating thing I've seen and the fastest velocity any of us have ever traveled at, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, that's true. Tonight, you were privileged to see a uh, new version of uh, an old film by Charles and Ray Eames. It's called Powers of Ten, and it's narrated by the MIT physicist uh, Philip Morrison. We uh, start with an ordinary scene and back away by powers of ten. Uh, that is, each scene ten times further away than the last one. Uh, the idea was first conceived in a Dutch junior high school, and it's very easy to understand. The powers of ten that uh, are shown are uh, uh, done in what's called exponential notation, so that a million is written as ten to the power six, one followed by six zeros. A trillion is ten to the power twelve, uh, and so on. Uh, we see things measured in uh, metric units. A meter is about uh, three feet across, and also in light years, uh, which is a light year is the distance light travels in a year. It's about six trillion miles. We start on the shores of uh, Lake Michigan, boom out to the uh, scale of the galaxies, a hundred million light years away, and then plummet back into the nucleus of a cell, and then to the nucleus of an atom. It's an amazing trip. The picnic near the lakeside in Chicago is the start of a lazy afternoon, early 1 October. We begin with a scene one meter wide, which we view from just one meter away. Now every 10 seconds we will look from 10 times farther away, and our field of view will be 10 times wider. This square is 10 meters wide, and in 10 seconds the next square will be 10 times as wide. Our picture will center on the picnickers, even after they've been lost to sight. 100 meters wide. The distance a man can run in 10 seconds. Cars crowd the highway. Power boats lie at their docks. The colorful bleachers are soldiers field. This square is a kilometer wide, 1,000 meters. The distance a racing car can travel in 10 seconds. We see the great city on the lake shore. 10 to the fourth meters, 10 kilometers. The distance a supersonic airplane can travel in 10 seconds. We see first the rounded end of Lake Michigan, then the whole great lake, 10 to the fifth meters. The distance an orbiting satellite covers in 10 seconds. Long parades of clouds. The day's weather in the Middle West. 10 to the sixth, a one with six zeros, a million meters. Soon the Earth will show as a solid sphere. We are able to see the whole Earth now, just over a minute along the journey. The Earth diminishes into the distance, but those background stars are so much farther away that they do not yet appear to move. A line extends at the true speed of light. In one second, it half crosses the tilted orbit of the moon. Now we mark a small part of the path in which the Earth moves about the sun. Now the orbital paths of the neighbor planets, Venus and Mars, then Mercury. Entering our field of view is the glowing center of our solar system, the sun. Followed by the massive outer planets, swinging wide in their big orbits. That odd orbit belongs to Pluto. A fringe of a myriad comets too faint to see completes the solar system. Ten to the fourteenth. As the solar system shrinks to one bright point in the distance, our sun is plainly now only one among the stars. Looking back from here, we note four southern constellations, still much as they appear from the far side of the Earth. This square is 10 to the 16th meters, one light year, not yet out to the next star. Our last 10 second step took us 10 light years further. The next will be 100. Our perspective changes so much in each step now that even the background stars will appear to converge. At last, we pass the bright star Arcturus and some stars of the Dipper. Normal but quite unfamiliar stars and clouds of gas surround us as we traverse the Milky Way galaxy. Giant steps carry us into the outskirts of the galaxy. 
And as we pull away, we begin to see the great flat spiral facing us. The time and path we chose to leave Chicago has brought us out of the galaxy along a course nearly perpendicular to its disk. The two little satellite galaxies of our own are the clouds of Magellan, 10 to the 22nd power, a million light years. Groups of galaxies bring a new level of structure to the scene. Glowing points are no longer single stars, but whole galaxies of stars seen as one. We pass the big Virgo cluster of galaxies among many others, a hundred million light years out. As we approach the limit of our vision, we pause to start back home. This lonely scene, the galaxies like dust, is what most of space looks like. This emptiness is normal. The richness of our own neighborhood is the exception. The trip back to the picnic on the lakefront will be a sped up version, reducing the distance to the Earth's surface by one power of 10 every two seconds. In each two seconds, we'll appear to cover 90% of the remaining distance back to Earth. Notice the alternation between great activity and relative inactivity, a rhythm that will continue all the way into our next goal, a proton in the nucleus of a carbon atom beneath the skin on the hand of a sleeping man at the picnic. to the ninth meters, 10 to the eighth, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We are back at our starting point. We slow up at one meter, 10 to the zero power. Now we reduce the distance to our final destination by 90% every 10 seconds each step much smaller than the one before. At 10 to the minus two, one one hundredth of a meter, one centimeter, we approach the surface of the hand. In a few seconds, we'll be entering the skin, crossing layer after layer from the outermost dead cells into a tiny blood vessel within. Skin layers vanish in turn, an outer layer of cells, felty collagen. The capillary containing red blood cells and a roughly lymphocyte. We enter the white cell. Among its vital organelles, the porous wall of the cell nucleus appears. The nucleus within holds the heredity of the man in the coiled coils of DNA. As we close in, we come to the double helix itself. A molecule like a long twisted ladder whose rungs of paired bases spell out twice in an alphabet of four letters the words of the powerful genetic message. At the atomic scale, the interplay of form and motion becomes more visible. We focus on one commonplace group of three hydrogen atoms bonded by electrical forces to a carbon atom. Four electrons make up the outer shell of the carbon itself. They appear in quantum motion as a swarm of shimmering points. At 10 to the minus 10 meters, one angstrom, we find ourselves right among those outer electrons. Now we come upon the two inner electrons held in a tighter swarm. As we enter upon a vast inner space, at last the carbon nucleus, so massive and so small. This carbon nucleus is made up of six protons and six neutrons. are in the domain of universal modules. There are protons and neutrons in every nucleus, electrons in every atom, atoms bonded into every molecule out to the farthest galaxy. As a single proton fills our scene, we reach the edge of present understanding. Are these some quarks in intense interaction? Our journey has taken us through 40 powers of 10. If now the field is one unit, then when we saw many clusters of galaxies together, it was 10 to the 40th, or one and 40 zeros. Mm. In spite of all we've found out, when we get to the extreme ends of the very large and the very small, it all evaporates into mystery, doesn't it? Well, it, uh, we start out knowing only a little, and then we expand our horizons. Uh, before science and technology, the smallest thing you knew about was about a tenth of a millimeter across a grit of sand. The biggest thing was a 
few miles away, which was what the horizon is. But now we've expanded the scale to 100 million light years, the scale of the galaxies, and down to a 10 trillionth or so of a centimeter, the scale of the nucleus of the atom. And we find a, a magnificent, astonishing, beautiful, and unexpected universe. It's just different from what our common sense notions uh, would have given us. And astronomers and nuclear physicists are working at both ends of the scale to expand our knowledge further. Thank you, Carl. Dr. Carl Sagan will be with us from time to time reporting on various scientific issues.